Hello YouTube, Fred Bergeron here from Inaxis. I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I'm going to quickly show you how we can upgrade the Protege WX firmware. Um, you know, in case there's obviously a new version that has been released or, uh, you know, you want to take advantage of all the latest features that are available or maybe some bug fixes. But it's fairly simple, okay? Um, but make sure that if you're upgrading from a very old version of WX or a very old hardware revision of the hardware, uh, uh, controller, make sure that you contact our support team just to make sure that the new version will work with the hardware that you have on site. Okay, so it's pretty simple. If you are WX or GX certified, typically you have access to the firmware downloads. So you go under the ICT.co website and under my ICT, you can download the file from there. The file will come with the firmware file upgrade and also the um, release notes. So then the release notes, you can see what was added, modified, or fixed into this new version. Also, this will happen maybe once or twice a year. ICT will send an email blast when the new version is available with a link to get the firmware. And also to download the file, you have to provide the serial number of the WX panel you're working on, okay? Just to confirm that it's a valid panel that is registered on the system. So let's have a look at how it's done. You see it's very easy, uh, but there's a few things that you need to remember after the update has been completed. So now let's go to the uh, main page of our WX panel here. Let's make this go full screen like that. Okay, so before you upgrade, if you're changing the database version of the WX panel, it may actually require you to start the programmable functions and the services and also ARM areas after the upgrade, okay? Because it's basically gonna do a default reset and then restore the backup after the fact, okay? For you, but you still have to remember to do this. So the best thing to do before leaving the site, you go under the health page of the um, WX system and then look at whatever is listed there and then you can fix it, okay? That's very important. Anytime you go to a, a WX or GX site, make sure you look at the health status before leaving the site. That will, you know, avoid any kind of major problems with you know, reporting services not being started or, you know, things like that. Okay, so to upgrade the firmware, it's fairly simple. You go under System and Application Software. Now, the newer versions of WX firmware, when you hit the um, Upload button, it's going to automatically call a backup task to back up the database of the system in case something really, really bad happens during the firmware update, which I've never seen before, but it's always a good idea to back up the database first, okay? So in this version, if I hit the upload button, then it's, and then I select the file here, which is version 1505. When I hit open, it's calling a backup. I can save it. And now it's uploading the new application software. So the first step, the system will send the file or upload the file to the memory of the controller and then the upgrade will start. So if you're doing the upgrade remotely, which is, in my opinion, maybe not the best idea if you have nobody on site to restart a module or something like that after, but it's basically saving the file and then when the file is properly saved and it's not corrupted, then it's gonna start the upgrade, all right? This is to avoid internet interruptions during the firmware update, okay? You see, now it's installing the application software. After this step is completed, the panel will revert back to the login screen and then you can log in. Again, make sure that there's no major health issues that, you know, your services, um, you know, and programmable functions are running and that the areas that needs to be armed and armed in 24 hours are armed. All right, so we're back to the login screen. Perfect. So uh, as you can see now, the system is telling me that the controller re requires a module update, which is normal after a firmware update, and that one of my areas has its temporary design, which for us means the 24 hour is disabled. So let's do the module update like that. And while this is happening, areas, and I can arm the 24 hour on the area probably go into alarm because there is no tamper switch on the power supply and you know uh, there's no battery so that's probably why it, that it did that so back into the home page I see there's no health issues so the panel is now functioning normally all right so I hope you like the videos if you're interested in um, you know um, uh, knowing more about ICT products uh, because we're the Canadian distributor of these uh, here uh, as well so 
just contact the sales team and the support team if you need help from the inaccess.com website. All right. So I hope you liked the video. Have a good one. My name is Fred Bergeron from Inaccess.